Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina man yahdihillahu fala mudilla lah wa man yudlil fala hadiya lah wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan 'abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلق ام من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam for the past several weeks we've been analyzing our hearts we've been analyzing our hearts and where our hearts lie we've been looking into the diseases of the hearts the diseases not the physical ailments the sickness but the disease of the heart which jeopardizes our salvation one of the worst diseases found in the heart as was discussed last week is having passionate love and desire for this world and the delights contained within it a love that is so strong that we become drunk from it and we will do anything and everything to get something in return the dunya this world is cold no matter how hard and strong we love it the love is never returned in the same manner We are so mesmerized by the bright lights and the shiny things that this world contains that we can no longer recognize what the true prize is what the real treasure is we are blinded by its temptation and the lovely things that overcome us so today i thought it would be appropriate to offer a little bit of perspective as was the manner of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from time to time he would remind his companions who were going through the same types of things that we go through their responsibility towards family career worldly pursuits that they all went through it is a misunderstanding that all of the companions they sat in the masjid with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the entire day and did nothing else Many of them were successful businessmen, traders and merchants. Many of them had a worldly life just like we have as well. Family and children and love and enjoyment and entertainment. And so from time to time the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would give them perspective to remind them of exactly what it was that they were doing and why they were here and what was the most important thing. And so there was a situation that took place during the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam an jabir ibn abdullah radiyallahu anhu anna rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam marra bi as-suq dakhilan min ba'd al-'aliya wa an-nas kanafata the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he passed by a marketplace this marketplace was in awali it's on the outskirts of medina this was the place that Abu Bakr as-Siddiq ended up living at the end of the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in this marketplace, there were people around him. 
فمر بجدي أسك ميت and he passed by a short-eared donkey carcass, a dead animal, right there amongst this market. It had been killed or it had been maimed. فتناوله فأخذ بأذني And so the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went down to this carcass, and in this report it says that he grabbed the dead animal by the ear as a way to belittle it, like he would grab a bad child in public. He would grab them by the ear. He grabs this animal by the ear and lifts it up in front of the people, and he says, "Ayyukum yuhibbu an hada lahu bidirham." Which one of you would love to have this for one dirham? Holding up this dead carcass, this rotting, foul, maimed animal. And the people, they responded, فَقَالُوا مَا نُحِبُّ أَنَّ أَنَّهُ لَنَا بِشَيْءٍ وَمَا نَسْنَعُ بِهِ And so they said, we don't want to have this. There's no one amongst us that would want to have this carcass. What would we do with such a thing? Recognizing that a dead animal that has not been slaughtered, it is considered to be najis. It is najasa. It is something filthy, something foul. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, after hearing that from his companions, he again asked them, "Atuhibuna annahu lakum?" So would you like it for free? You don't have to pay anything. You can take it for free. It's yours. فَقَالُوا وَاللَّهِ لَوْ كَانَ حَيًّا كَانَ عَيْبًا فِيهِ He said, even if this animal was alive, then it has some عَيْب. There's some deficiency about the animal. That the ears were the wrong size. It was deformed. And in another narration it says that the ears had been removed, that it had been maimed. An animal that had been deformed or maimed is nothing you can do with it. You can't keep it in your livestock. You don't want it. It's not a prize slaughter. It's not something you're looking at when you go to the to the marketplace and you're looking at the meats and the and the poultry and stuff. You look for the best quality to take home. You don't look for the one that's odorous or the one that's the color is wrong. So they said, even if it's alive, we wouldn't take it because there's some deformity about it. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He says to them after they agreed that this was a foul. Animal, carcass, rotting. فَوَاللَّهِ لَدُّنْيَا أَهْوَنُ عَلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ هَذَا عَلَيْكُمْ He says, by Allah, this world is more insignificant to him than this dead, rotting carcass is to you. The life of this world, its value is less in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than a rotting beast. Najis, najasa, filth. You cannot consume it. You cannot benefit from it. You cannot take it. It is only to be disposed of. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said this to his companions, offering them some perspective as to what was important, what it was that they should be looking at and valuing. So this, brothers and sisters. In the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal, it is what we are filling our homes with. It is what we are running after, chasing, compromising our faith often to obtain it. It is filth. It is rotten. It is diseased, void of any significant benefit. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said in authentic narration in Sahih Muslim. When he said, "Wallahi, ma dunya fi al-akhirah illa mithlu ma yajalu ahadukum isbahu hadhi fi al-yam," showing us what it was, the comparison between this life and the next. He says that this life to the next is just like one of you dipping your pointer finger into the ocean and removing it. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says. What do you think you will bring out of that ocean? What would remain on the tip of your finger of moistness, 
When you look at the ocean, this is the akhirah. It almost seems as if it's endless when we look at it. And in comparison to what you can take out with a dip of a finger, it is endless. You cannot compare it. What remains on the tip of the finger in moments, it's dried away and evaporated. It's gone never to come back again. You cannot taste it. You cannot quench your thirst with it. You cannot be pleased with it. There is no benefit to be taken in comparison to the next life. It does not matter how much of it we obtain and accumulate. This little bit, it will not help us when we have to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in another authentic narration as reported by Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu yaqulu qala rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yatba'u al-mayyita thalatha fayarji'u ithnani wa yabqa wahid yatba'uhu ahluhu wa maluhu wa amaluhu fayarji'u ahluhu wa maluhu wa yabqa amaluhu the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this authentic narration, he highlights exactly what is meant by the benefit that we take. What we can take from this life, that little bit that we bring out of the ocean. When he said that there are three things that will follow everyone to their grave. Three things will follow each one of us to the grave. It will be your wealth, your family, and your deeds. All of them will follow you to the grave. However, two of them will return back to this world. Your wealth and your family will remain behind you. And the only thing that you will have are the deeds done. Lillah. For the sake of Allah. The overtime that you put in at the office. The cars that you fill your driveway with. The multitude of rooms in your home. The games that you watch and the games that you play. The hobbies that we immerse ourselves in, that we dedicate our time to. And even the family members that we love. The family members that we are sacrificing so much for. If we are neglecting our responsibilities to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of all of that, then we are running the risk of losing everything. And this is for halal. All of this is halal. Hobbies and games and excitement and enjoyment, worldly possessions, having a nice home, having a nice car, having a nice job, all of this is halal. It is permissible for you to do. In some situations, it's actually encouraged that you do this. But if you sacrifice it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that you're willing to sell it for your akhirah, then you will be in grave danger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, الَّذِينَ يَسْتِحِبُّونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا عَلَى الْآخِرَةِ وَيَسُدُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَيَبْغُونَهَا عِوَجًا أُولَٰئِكَ فِي ضَلَالٍ بَعِيدٍ Those who prefer the life of this world instead of the hereafter, and they prevent mankind from the path of Allah Azza wa Jal, and see crookedness therein, then they are far astray. They are far astray from the truth, from the reality that you prefer the little bit of enjoyment that you have over the next life. You're willing to take all of it right now and sacrifice your hereafter. In doing that, you are preventing yourself. You are preventing your family from the true path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, when we seek out the pleasures of this world over those of the hereafter, when we sacrifice what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for us, a reward in the paradise, then we have failed ourselves first. And then we have failed our families second. We have let our families down. We have disappointed ourselves and our loved ones. It will not matter how happy that we have made them. And that is a great concern for many of us in this room, is how happy that we can make our family and how much we can give them, what we can provide for them. Each and every one of us 
that is responsible for someone else is always looking at giving them the best, better than what you had, more than what you had, and all of that is well and good. But it will not matter how much you gave them. It will not matter how much you spent on them, how many hours you worked for them, how many prayers that you missed because of them, how many prayers that they missed enjoying what you provided for them. All of this for the sake of this life, neglecting the akhirah, that passionate love that you have for this dunya, ready to sell yourself short in the next. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَزِينَتَهَا نُوَفِّ إِلَيْهِمْ مَعْمَالَهُمْ فِيهَا وَهُمْ فِيهَا لَا يُبْخَسُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ لَيْسَ لَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا النَّارِ وَحَبِطَ مَا صَنَعُوا فِيهَا وَبَاطِلٌ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Hud, he says, Whosoever desires the life of the world and its glitter and its beauties, to them we shall pay them in full. If that's all you wanted, if that's all you're looking for, if the only enjoyment that you're looking for is right now, we have to have fun now, we have to enjoy now, we have to live for now, live in the moment. That's the attitude. And that's the attitude that our culture that we're living in pushes towards us. You have to live in the moment. Enjoy today. How many times have you heard that before? If that's what you want, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give it to you. He will give it to you in full. Everything that you ever did, anything that you deserve of good, Allah will pay you right now. They are those who have nothing in the hereafter but an nar the fire wa na'udhu billah. And vain are the deeds that they did. Whatever good deeds that you did in this life, if you're only looking to be rewarded now in this dunya, then there will be nothing of payment in the next. There will be nothing for you to take from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah. It will be rendered null and void. And of no effect is what they used to do. Brothers and sisters, if this is where we are, if this is what our hearts are attached to, then we have traded our fortune for nothing but a rotten carcass. We have traded real wealth, real enjoyment, real bliss for nejis, for filth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ اشْتَرُوا الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا بِالْآخِرَةِ فَلَا يُخَفِّفُ عَنْهُمُ الْعَذَابِ وَلَا هُمْ يُنْصَرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse, in Surah Al-Baqarah, he says, those are they who have bought the life of this world at the price of the hereafter. And their torment shall not be lightened, nor, nor shall they be aided. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد Sometimes we find ourselves, everyone has a moment of clarity from time to time. We all know what is right and what is wrong. And I am safe, or I feel safe to say that with each and every one of you sitting in this room. Each and every one of you in this room, you know what is right and what is wrong. You know when you're doing good and you know when you're doing bad. And when we have moments of clarity, which sometimes are short-lived, we begin to prioritize ourselves, our family life, what we should be doing, what we should be striving for, what we should be looking forward to. But then there are those moments that we are turning away, that we don't want to hear this thing. We don't want to hear about death. We don't want to hear about the akhirah. 
We don't want to hear about the reality of what is coming. Why is it that we have these feelings? Why is it that we even would deny our own selves, to lie to our own selves? It's interesting that one of the leaders, the Khalifa of the Umayyad dynasty, Suleiman ibn Abdul Malik, who was the seventh Khalifa of the Umayyad dynasty. And you know these leaders, these rulers, they lived in palaces and they had whatever they wanted, they had power and they had position and they had dunya. But early on, during the time of the Tabi'een, there were still many of them that had some religious inclination. So it was said that one of them, this one, Suleiman ibn Abdul Malik, he goes to one of the great scholars of the Tabi'een. These are the people that came after the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he says to him a similar question. Why is it that we love the dunya so much? Why is it that we have fallen in love with this world when we know that it's going to end and we cannot take any of it with us? And he says, it was reported that it was from Abu Hazm, one of the great scholars of the Tabi'een. He says, لِأَنَّكُمْ أَمَّرْتُكُمْ دُنْيَاكُمْ Because you have built up your dunya so much, وَخَرَبْتُمْ أَخِرَتَكُمْ And you have destroyed your akhirah. You have spent all of your energy and all of your effort, all of your time, building up your dunya, sacrificing your akhirah, that you have destroyed it. فَكَرِهْتُمْ أَن تَنْتَقِلُوا مِنَ الْعُمْرَانِ إِلَى الْخُرَابِ So you hate and despise moving from the buildings that you have made and the life that you have created to destruction in the hereafter. So you have fallen in love with this life. And you despise thinking about the akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تُرِيدُونَ عَرَضَ الدُّنْيَا وَاللَّهُ يُرِيدُ الْآخِرَةِ That you want the delights and enjoyment of this world, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for you al-akhirah. A beautiful bliss, eternal happiness. There is nothing that you could imagine of joy. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, فِيهَا مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذْنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطْرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ the delights of this place no eye has ever seen or ear has ever heard of or any human being could ever imagine the bliss and enjoyment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in His paradise. Brothers and sisters, it is not too late to begin building an akhirah. It is not too late to begin to heal our hearts and redirect that love from what is nothing but filth no benefit, nothing of real value, and begin to invest in our next life. The reality is as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الدنيا سجن المؤمن وجنة الكافر The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that this dunya, it is a prison for the believer. And it is the paradise for the one who denies faith. It is a sijin, a prison for the believer. Because you cannot enjoy everything now. You have to wait for real enjoyment and bliss. You have to wait for real mercy and ease. Just like the prisoner completing his sentence. Just waiting to get out. Freedom. Everlasting freedom while the person that turns their back on Allah treats this place, the real prison, as a paradise. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts and to make us firm upon this faith al Islam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim, inna ka hamidun majid wa akhiru da'wana. الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة